this is Junichiro Horikawa, and this is a fourth episode of X for algorithmic design. And the topic today is variables for VEX. Now, let me first explain what variable is. A variable is a programming concept which is used in any kind of almost any kind of programming languages, which is a container for a single data. Now, there are various types of data available for any kind of languages, like, for example, integers, float numbers, or a string. And the variable is a container that can contain those data as a single value. And the thing about variable is that once you determine that this container is for integers, you can only contain integer values. Same for float and string and all the other variable types. This means is that you cannot put other types of data into a different container. For example, you cannot bring strings into a float container. That's the main rule, but sometimes you can convert one type of variables, one type of data into another so that you can put contain one variable to another type of variable. For example, for numerical values like integers and float, you can convert this integer value into float like into 3.0 then input it inside the float variable the float container <clears throat> do the same for the float you can convert this float into integer like 4 or 5 then you can contain that into an integer variable so by changing the value into this specific, specific container type or variable type, then you can input that value into those uh, specific variables. Now this rule applies to all, almost all of the programming languages and that is the same for a VEX, which is probably based on a C language. Now let's try to use Houdini to actually create a variable and how we can use them in real practice. First of all, let's see what kind of data types are there in Houdini using VEX, especially when it gets to procedure modeling. First of all, let's create a geometry node, then create a attribute wrangle, and let's set it to detail so that it can calculate once. And I'm gonna name this data types. Now, if you go to the VEX document page on Houdini, and there is a page called VEX language reference. If you go there, there is a <clears throat> topic called data types. So there you can see what kind of data types you can use inside Houdini. So there are like integers, float, several different types of vectors and several different types of matrices, matrices, string, and so on. Uh, we're not going to go into a, we're not going to talk about the array and struct in this tutorial. We're going to do that in other video since it has a deep topic. So let's try to create a variable uh, using a Houdini uh, detail wrangle. And the first thing I would like to make is the integer variable. In order to create a variable, the first thing you need to do is to specify the type of variable that you want to create. Specify the type of container that you want to uh, create. So if it's an integer, you type int like this. And then create a space. Then the next thing you want to do is to name its container. So say I just want to name it as i. So this i will become the name of the container which can contain a integer type value. Then you can uh, close the uh, line with the semicolon at this point. And at this point, uh, you have just created an empty container which can contain the integer value. And <clears throat> In default, if it's integer, the default value will be zero, I think, for the i. So in order to check that, you can access to the attribute value of the detail by saying i at, let's just name the attribute like a. Then this i is equal to this value, this container that I, you, have, you have just created. And 
you have bring up this value into a attribute called a and it is the integer type now let's look at the geometry spreadsheet to see if we have got the value zero now i am going to create the geometry spreadsheet underneath this viewport so that we can uh, interactively check it so first i'm going to click this uh, arrow button and then choose this split pane to top bottom then we'll have two windows on top and bottom and on the bottom part i am going to uh, add a new pane called geometry spreadsheet and show this up now I have just clicked this data type wrangle then go to the detail then as you can see you have a newly created uh, attribute called a which is equal to zero so without uh, <clears throat> say without uh, inputting any values into a integer variable I uh, the default value is equal to zero at this point now in order to insert any values inside this container or inside this variable uh, you just use this equal uh, operator so <clears throat> if you want to input like value like 3 you can input uh, the value has been the 3 has been inputted into i the container i then i has been transferred into the attribute a like this so as we did last time we can also use like chi a parameter and create a slider for an integer like this using chi uh, functions and then if i move this sliders you can interactively change this uh, container value and this is the basic rule for the variable. First, you need to set the type of the variable, set of type of the data, then name that data with any name that you want to use, and then store some values inside a container using equal. Now let's try to do the same for other types of uh, data types like float. For the float, you type float as a type name of the type. Then let's name the f and let's create a variable let's create a value flow value using a parameter called v let's promote that clicking but this button then you have this <clears throat> value that you can change from zero to one and in order to check that inside a geometry spreadsheet let's create an attribute called v then input a value f that you have just created as a float and see if the variable has been successfully created and there it is now this same rule applies for every other data types for example like vector you can use chb to promote the vector value let's promote this you have x y and z value which you can just change it to set the type this or you can also do the string For the string you can type a string values like these same for matrix like 4x4 four four matrix you can use ch4 so you have 4x4 four four matrix like these and can be uh, transferred into attribute as the other uh, data types now this is the very basic of variables and next I would like to talk about a operator uh, between a numerical values string values and vector values first let's talk about the operators between a numerical values well what I meant by operators it's just about addition subtraction multiplication and division and similar kind of mathematical operations so the operator for the numerical value is just the mathematical operation equal to mathematical operations like 3 plus 
3 equal to 6 or some 3 multiplied by 3 equals to 9 and so on. So it's pretty straightforward. Let's try to do that in Houdini. Okay, I am going to create another attribute wrangle. Then change this to a detail. First name this as an integer operator. This. Let's try to create some uh, variable first. So I'm going to create two variables, uh, two integer variables, one uh, named as a, and I'm going to use a parameter chi so that I can change the value with the sliders. And let's create a second value named as b. So I have a and b currently. Now let's try to do the numerical operations between these two values. First of all, let's try to do the addition. Now I'm going to create a integer variable called add. And in order to add those two values, you just have to do a plus b. And that's it. And let's check this out in a attribute, detail attribute. So what I, what I just need to do is to create a attribute uh, named as, let's say, I'm just going to name as add, then input this uh, variable named as add to it. So this, the name of the attribute and the name of the variable is different. <clears throat> so if you change the name of the variables to add to, then you have to change this one to add to. But if you want to keep the variable name as add, then you don't have to change this name, right? So as a result, you'll be able to get the value that has been added uh, by A and B. So if you change the A or B, the value must change, correspond to it. Now I'm going to rename this to add. And let's try to do the other kind of operations like subtraction between those two values or multiplication or a division. And let's see the result for all those uh, operations. So for the sub, I am going to input sub for the multiplication, mol and division, div. Now you have just done a four types of operations and added into the attribute. And here are the results. And if you change those integer sliders values, you see the changes uh, interactively has been done, updated. <clears throat> but it, um, you might have noticed that one thing uh, that seems uh, weird, a bit weird is this division value. Uh, however, uh, whatever values that I do, the value keeps becoming zero. So if the A is equal to two and the B equals to eight, the, if you do the division between those two values, the value should be something like 0.15 uh, or something, <clears throat> but uh, it doesn't seems to give a value like that. That is because the result uh, value, uh, the result attribute is set as integer. So integer only accept uh, the value, integer value. So that should be either zero, one, two, three or so. So you cannot have a float value as a result <clears throat> if you create it a integer value, integer attribute. But even if you have created the float attribute like f at div, you still get the, val the result zero. That is because you have divided the value between two integer value like this. Both a and b is equal to integer. So as a result, what you get is an integer uh, value. So even if you have changed the attribute type to a float for result, you still get zero as a result. Let's change this to i bet to back to i again. Now, if you uh, make the value a greater than b, then the division becomes more than zero. Uh, that is because if, if you divide uh, a by three, that becomes uh, two point something. But <clears throat> uh, since the final value or a and b is equal to integer, so it 
has just rounded up, uh, rounded down to a integer. In this case, the two point something value, two point one or value like that, has trimmed to two. Now that was the case for the integer. Let's look at the float value. I'm just going to copy this integer operator to name rename this into float operator. Then go to the parameter interface and change the type of these two parameters into float. Okay, and I'm going to rename all those integer uh, variable into float instead of an integer. I'm going to change this to CHF as well. Let's copy this and rename this to float and all these become F as well. I'm going to create a float attribute as well. And as a result, what you get as a result is equal to a float value. And even if you have a smaller value, uh, the A becomes smaller than B, you don't get the integer value zero, but uh, you get the float value zero point something. So uh, whenever you want to do, you want to be able to have the float division uh, value as a result, then you should always use a float instead of integers. But if you're okay by rounding up the value into integers, then doing the operation between the integer is fine. And that will be uh, less uh, memory usage that use less memories as well. So in theory, it is faster than using float. But what if you have the integer value that you got from somewhere else and you want to convert it into a float that you, so that you can get a float value as a result? Now, in that case, uh, you have to do an action called casting. So let's look at how you can cast an integer into a float so that you can do a you can have a float result even if you do the division uh, operations between integers to integers so i am going to create a, another attribute wrangle change this to detail name this casting say number casting Going back to the integer operator and let's copy these two values, integer A and integer V, then paste it into a number casting wrangle, then uh, promote those two sliders value, CHI, click by click in this button. Now let's try to do the operation division. Now first let's try to see what the result is between those two integer values. Now, as I have uh, shown you last time, the result of two integer operation division operation is always an integer. So if the value A is smaller than value B, then the result is always zero. If otherwise, it, the float value has been trimmed like this. Now, in order to get the float uh, result for those uh, calculation between A and B, what you need to do is to convert one of the values A or B into a float value. So that, so as a result, if you have one of the value numerical values to be float, then the result will always be float. In order to change the integer value into float, you do an action called casting, and here's how you do it. So let's say if you want to convert the value b into a float and i'm going to name the new variable called bf as a float value and in order to convert v what you need to do is to first create a parenthesis and inside you type float then on the next value you type b and as a result you'll be able to get you'll be able to convert this integer value v into a float value bf now at this point, uh, you can do the new calculations like float equal to 
uh, float v equal to a divided by bf. And since, well, the a is integers, but since the bf is float, the value that you can, that you have calculated is a float, including the float man number. Like this. Well, you might have thought that the reason why you get the float value is because I have put I have converted the attribute to float, but even if you do, if you even if you convert this uh, value c attribute value c into float, the result is pretty much the same because the both uh, a and b, if the both a and b is equal to integer, what you get is always integer value even if you uh, try to set the result type to float so in order to get the float result you have to convert one of the values a or b into float like this the thing is that there is a trick that you can do a bit more simply and that is uh, you can since you have already created the variable called uh, bf uh, using a float variable a float type data type you can kind of skip using this float parenthesis, but you can directly input a B. And this will also convert this value, integer value B, into a float value. That is because you have already created a float variable like this. Uh, so this casting would work when you want to directly use B into this calculation right here instead of using a variable that you have created right here so by doing this this doesn't really work you get the integer result but by casting at this point without using a variable this will still work so uh, if you want to use the integer value as a float inside the operator directly then you might want to use this casting uh, using float with the parenthesis but uh, otherwise you can do this way you can convert the integer value into float by using a variable like this then use that value instead of directly using the casting inside operator so either way works Now next, I would like to talk about the operator for strings. Now let's create a attribute wrangle, set it to detail, and I'm gonna name this string operator. Now let's create two strings using a chs, which is a parameter for string. I'm gonna name this a for the first string. I'm gonna name b for the second string. Let's promote that. And you will be able to get a two input text field. Now I'm gonna type ABC for the A and DEF for the B. Now for the string operator, it's uh, pretty simple. You can just do a addition between those two uh, string values. So if you try to do a addition, let's name this. Let's name the variable C. Then if you do A plus B, what you get is a concatenated string so let's try to promote it to the attribute as a C as you can see um, what you get is the concatenated string a plus B and that's it like this so it's pretty simple um, otherwise you cannot do any kind of uh, operators you cannot do multiplication doesn't work so for string operations you can only do uh, addition and you cannot also do any operations between string and other types of uh, data like if you want to add string with numerical value numerical values that doesn't really work so if you try to say 39 that doesn't really work but if the 39 itself is a string then that in that case that works
but sometimes you want to convert a string into a number so that you can use a string value as a number or otherwise you can you want to convert the number into a string so that you want to you can use this use the number as a string like I just did right here so in that case you do another kind of casting that is a string casting so let's see how we could do that I am going to create another attribute wrangle I'm gonna name this string casting and I'm just going to create a single string parameter call a and contain that into a string variable call a right and let's just say well since I want to convert the string value into a number let's try to type some number value like this now the value that you have just entered into a string a seems like a number but it is not actually a number if you try to create a float attribute into a detail like name as val and then insert this string this will give you error because uh, the attribute type is float but the one that you want going to insert is a string so the there is a type uh, errors in between uh, those two values attributes and variables so what you need to do is to convert this uh, string a into a numerical value either a float or integer so that you can uh, input it inside the numerical attribute in this case you cannot use a uh, float with parentheses but instead you use a function called a to f and inside this parenthesis you type a as a parameter for this function and as a result you have converted this uh, string a into a value and then uh, stored it inside uh, the attribute and I forgot to convert this attribute to detail now as a result you'll get a float attribute called val with a float value that you have inserted it right here but this uh, of course this doesn't work if the the string is not uh, cannot be converted into a float value like abc or in that case we'll just give you a zero as a result a2f function only works if the string a is can be converted into a value otherwise it will just give you a zero so 200 will work 220 point something will work but if the value is uh, other than numerical values like using characters then you always get zero okay let's uh, change this flow value again now what if you want to convert the string into an integer then well um, it there is a similar function which can convert the string into integer that is called a2i by using a2i you can convert the value into a string and even if the value that you have inputted inside a string is a float value the floating value 0.456 will be trimmed and then becomes an integer value like this now let's look at the other way around uh, when you want to convert a number into a string so let's create another attribute wrangle i'm gonna name this string casting 2 set it to detail and let's try by uh, converting a integer value into a string first so let's have some string attribute or uh, string parameters like named as a chi a so you have currently the value integer value become from 0 to 10 <clears throat> and let's also create a string attribute for detail named as val and if you try to direct directly input this integer value into a string attribute this will give you an error so somehow you need to convert this value a into a integer value or a string value now similar to what we have done in string casting one using a2f or a2i there is a function that you can convert integer into a string that is called i2a by using this 
you can directly convert this integer value into a string and then you can finally insert it into a string attribute like this. Now let's also try it using a float converting float into a string. So I'm gonna create a float value v which in this case you have a value from 0 to 1 with a floating value. Now if you let's also create a value to file 2 as a string attribute on detail then you might think there is a function called uh, f2a but unfortunately there are no such functions uh, in order to change the float value into string. So converting float into a string is a bit tricky. You need to use a bit uh, different functions, which is called s print f, uh, which will convert any kind of data types into a string, including vectors, matrix, and so on. <clears throat> and in order to use this print f functions, you need to uh, use two para parameters inside this parenthesis. Uh, the first is the data type of uh, the one that you want to convert into a string. And the second value is the actual value that you want to convert. So the second value should be a B, which is this one. And for the first parameters, you have to determine what is the type of this at variable B. So in this case, this is a float. In order to determine that this variable b is float you type percent f and as a result you can uh, convert this float value into a string and insert it into a string attribute like this now if you want to know what kind of types you can use for the first parameter of this printf function like I, other than uh, float values you can go to a uh, vex functions page for the printf now let's go back to the vex page first and inside this vex page go to a vex function page then search for printf printf now it says the format a string like printf but returns a result as a string instead of printing it now there is also a function called printf which is used to print the value inside the parenthesis inside a console but by using sprintf you can create you can uh, convert the value inside a parenthesis into a string now in order to see what kind of format you can use for the first parameter right here go to a printf and there you see a bunch of types you can use for the first parameters and the one that i have just used is this one percent f and if you want to <clears throat> convert like the vectors uh, you can probably use E if you if it's matrix you can use uh, capital E and so on so whenever you want to convert any kind of variables you can use uh, this s print f function now that was the casting for the string uh, next let's go to a operator for uh, vectors Now the vector operation is pretty similar to numerical operations, so it's pretty easy to understand what is going on. And in order to do a geometrical operations, you're going to do a lot of vector operations. So let's try to see uh, how we can uh, do that. Again, I am going to create a attribute wrangle, then set it as detail. Then let's create a two vectors, one named as v1, and I'm gonna uh, create a constant vector like one two three and I'm gonna create second vector and I'm gonna set it as four five six for x y and z value like this uh, you use set function in order to create a, a vector so the first parameter will be a x value the second one will be y and this third one will be z now as the numerical operations you can do much the same with the vectors as well like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Let's try to see how we do that. Okay so I'm going to do first do the addition 
and create the first create a vector called vAd variable then add those two values that I have created right here b1 plus b2 and close the line with the semicolon okay do the same for subtraction b1 minus b2 or multiplication b mul equal b1 multiplied by b2 vector v div is b1 divided by b2 and let's try to see the result in a detail attribute right here so b at v at v at so b mul div let's call this vector operator now let's check at the addition it says the result of the v add which is this one is uh, the first value is 5 the 0 means x value and the 1 means y value and the 2 means z value so as a result you get 5 7 9 and if you, we go back to the initial values b1 and b2 you can see that the first uh, v add 0 value is equal to the value added by the x for the v1 and x for the v2 so as a result you get 5 and for the value uh, v add on the second value of the v add which is equal to y is also equal to the value uh, for v1 y value for the v1 and va y value for the v2 being added so 2 plus 5 same for the z 3 plus 9 uh, 3 plus 6 equal to 9 and that is pretty much the same for other kind of operations b1 minus v2 is equal to 1 minus 4 and 2 minus 5 and 3 minus 6 so if you go there uh, all the calculations is equal to minus 3 and also for the multiplication if the x multiplied by the b2x is equal to 4 and if you go to the v mul, you, pre you can pretty much guess what the result is just multiplying the same uh, axis x y and z same for division and even though it looks like an integer the all the value inside the vector is um, used as a float value so you can get the float result for the division so that was pretty straightforward well Let's try to uh, use this vector operation in real practice by modifying the point position for some geometries to get some image. Now let's create a sphere and convert this into a polygon so that we will have a point information for each point for this sphere. At this point we have a point position as a capital P. Uh, let's create another uh, attribute for normal direction for each point so I'm gonna create a normal node con connect it to the sphere then use a add normal to to point so as a result you'll get a additional n attribute which is equal to a normal direction at each point like this Right, so I'm going to try to use this normal as well as this point position added together to actually change the point position to a new point position. So in this case I'm going to use a point wrangle instead of detail since I want to access each of the point attribute at each point. All right now First of all, let's uh, retrieve the point position. Let's try to create a attribute uh, variable called position. And then insert this attribute at P, capital at P, like this, by accessing to it. Also, let's create another variable for the vector called gnome. And in order to access the normal attribute, you access it, you type it like this at capital N. Now what you want to do now is to add those two vectors together using a vector operations. So 
I'm going to create another variable name as new pass and do the mo uh, addition between those two values that I have retrieved like this and then finally I'm going to replace or update the current point position at capital P with this new position that I've just created and as a result all the point position have has been updated all the point has moved to the normal direction by a distance of one because this normal direct normal vector that have been created with this one have a distance to one so that's the simplest case how you can use the vector uh, operations and what's special about vector operation is that uh, you can also uh, do the operation between vectors and numerical values as well. So that means you can do the addition between vectors and integers or subtraction between vectors and integers or multiplication between vectors and float and division as well. And let's try to see how that works. Again, I am going to create an attribute wrangle, set it to detail. I'm gonna name this vector operator2 and let's create a vector value the vector value first vector variable first uh, name set as one two three as a constant value okay and i am going to create a flow value like uh, say f and let's create that as a parameter like this for so from zero to one All right now Let's try to do the um, operations between those two values. Now when you do the operations between vectors and float, say this is the vector and this is the float value. What would happen is that this float will be converted into a same size vector meaning if you have x y and z so three vectors then the float will convert it into 3f f f f for every x y and z and then do the uh, operations so in this case the result will become x plus f y plus f and z plus f. If it's multiplication, then the result will become x multiplied by f, y multiplied by f, and z multiplied by f. And that is same for the integers. If you try to do the operations between the vectors and integer, like i, then the i will automatically convert it into a three vectors like this and all the f become replaced with the i for this calculations so that's how it works uh, between vectors and numbers now let's try to see this let's create a vector p add as a result uh, variable then add base which is this one which is this vector and add with this float value and see what would happen and let's also contain that contain that into a detail attribute called b add b add like this okay as a result uh okay so the the base vector is one two three and by adding point four two one and as you can see the point four two one has been added to every x y and z value and been apply to a vector attribute like this. Let's also try with the other operations like multiplications vector v mult is equal to base multiply by f and b mol equal v mol. Now if you look at the result here um, you can see that all those x y and z value has been multiplied with the same f value and applied 
like this. So if the f value is equal to zero, then all of them, all of the x, y, z value will become zero. If it's equal to one, you will just get one multiplied by one, two multiplied by one, three multiplied by one. If it's 0.5, you get the half size of all those x, y, and z value, like this. Same for subtraction and division as well. Now you can also do the operations between uh, two different size of vectors like x, y, and z plus w, u. In this case, what would happen is that the smaller size of vectors will have an additional axis. In this case, it is a vector 3 between vector 2. So the vector tool will be converted into vector 3. And as a result, you'll get additional axis into uh, this vector 2. And when you do the operations between vectors and vectors, what you get as an additional value is always 0. So, <clears throat> if we do the vector 3 plus vector 2, then the result will be x plus w, y plus uh, v, and z plus 0, which is equal to z. Like this. Same for multiplication, subtraction, and division. All those, if it's multiplication, this operation will just change the multiplication and for the z it's going to be multiplied by zero so become zero like this so this is uh, how uh, this is how it works with the two different size of vectors now let's try to see that in a operation I'm going to copy this vector operator 2 and name it as 3 and I'm going to create a vector2 variable which is this one vector2 and named as say u and I am going to create a constant vector like 4 and 5 and let's try to do the addition first so the result value will be a vector value three vectors x y and z so i'm going to create a attribute for the vector uh, named as say result r and do the multiplication plus between base and u now let's try to see the result by uh, setting it as a detail attribute Okay, as a result, what you get is 5, 7, 3, and if you, we look at these two values together, you can see that the x has been added together and become 5, and the y has added together to become 7, but since there is no z value for the vector u, a uh, vector 2, so it has be, uh, these value 0 has been added to the last z value, and 0 plus 3 became 3. So it looks correct. Now if we try to uh, check the multiplication by just changing this to multiple, the result become 4, 10, 0, and that is uh, equivalent to 1 multiplied by 4, that is equal to x, uh, 2 multiplied by 5, equivalent to 10, and 3 multiplied by additional a value equal to zero which is equal to zero so that's the value that seems correct so that's how it works between a vectors uh, two different size of vectors although in most cases uh, we don't do the operations between two different vectors because it's a bit confusing so most of the time when you do the operations between two different values that will be between vectors and single numerical values like float or integers so let's look at some uh, practical examples how we can uh, actually use that kind of operations. To do that, I am going to copy those uh, sphere and normal that I have created before and then bring it right here. Then I'm going to create a point wrangle. And let's try to move each point 
uh, using a normal direction. So I'm going to name this move. First, I want to access to the position of the each point, which can be retrieved like this. Created an attribute called pass, then access it. Access to a point position attribute. Uh, same for the normal. I'm going to first create a variable called norm and access to a at n attribute. Now, as I did before, I'm going to add those two values together like this. But in this case, I want to control uh, how much I can move. I want to move the point to the normal directions. To do that, currently the size of this normal is equal to one. But uh, by multiplying this normal vectors by a flow value like the value in between 0 to 1, I can kind of control the size of this value. As I said, if I multiply this, uh, if I multiply the vector with the float, the float will become the three uh, vectors uh, corresponding to the size of this uh, vectors. So if it's 0, then that will be 0, 0, 0. And multiply by norm will become 0. So 0 means you get the result, the vector 0. And as a result, the position doesn't really change. The new position is equal to the current position. If it's equal to 1, then you'll get the full size of this normal because uh, all the x, y, and z value will be multiplied by 1. So that is equal to... The, that is equivalent to the original normal direction. If you multiply by 0.5, then all the x, y, and z become a half the size. So as a result, the moving distance is also the half size as well. So let's try to see that. Uh, so what we want to do is to multiply this normal vector by a flow value. And let's name this S and promote the flow value and currently it's equal to zero so if you multiply this uh, vector by zero then this one should be zero so what you get is the original position now let's replace the point position with newly created positions like this now let's try to increase this uh, flow value and Based on the slider value, you can see that the point position is changing gradually. If it's equal to 1, the norm, if it is using the normal direction as it is and move each point with a distance equal to 1 to the normal direction. If it's 0, nothing has moved. If it's 0.5, the half, the distance, so the 0.5 distance of 0.5 has been moved to the normal direction. So <clears throat> this is pretty the essential way how you can use the operations between the vector and the new numbers. Now when it comes to vectors, sometimes we want to access just the x value of the vectors or just the y value of the vectors and use that for other purposes. Like in this case, uh, if you want to just get the x coordinate of the, this, uh, each, point at this each point of this sphere, uh, you kind of need to know how you can access just the x value of the point position p. Now let me show you how you can do that. Uh, I am going to create a attribute wrangle again, named as dot operator. Set it a detail. Now let's create a vector value like a, and with a constant value like a one two three, right? And then in order to uh, access to a x value of this vector there is two way one way is to use the uh, array like accessing using a square bracket uh, let's have that and uh, as i 
told you the value that's used in the inside the vector is always a float value so you can have a float variable to access it uh, let's say x1 is equal to a and in order to access it you use square bracket and inside a square bracket you type zero so zero means the first index of this vectors so if you want to access to the y you type one if you want to access the z you type zero r uh, two so if it's zero you're accessing to the x coordinate of this vector now let's check that out in a detail attribute called x1 now as you can see you have uh, successfully retrieved the x coordinate if you set it to one then you get the y value if you set it to two you get the z value like this and the another way in order to access to the x y or z coordinate of the vector you use a dot operator and this is how it works create an x2 variable a flow variable then you do y dot x and let's have that in a detail attribute as well this and as you can see the value you get you get the similar value like you did uh, with the square bracket if you say dot y you can get the y attribute uh, y at value for this vector z you'll get this so you can use either way uh, using square bracket like an array or you can use a dot operator like this but um, i think using a dot operator is much easier to understand now let's try to use this dot operator in the real practice as well i'm going to again create a sphere set it as polygon and let's say i want to access only to a x coordinate of this polygon for each point and then use that x coordinate value as a color value so gradually changing the color of the points based on the x value so let's try to do that i'm going to create a point triangle and then let's uh, connect that with the sphere let's name this color okay so first of all i want to access to the x coordinate so let's create a variable float variable called x first then access into the x coordinate of the point position so the this add p is actually a vector value x y and z because it indicates the point position so if you want access to the x coordinate you just say dot x like this now if you look at the size of the sphere currently the <coughs> maximum uh, size of this uh, x coordinate will be one equal to one since the radius is equal to one and the minimum for the x coordinate is equal to minus one negative one so <coughs> uh, and the color when you when you make a color you have to create a vector value x y and z and that is in between 0 to 1 so you have to kind of uh, remap the negative value into a positive so let's say if you uh, let's say if the x coordinate is equal to minus 1 then I want to set the color value for the set, let's say the red value to be equal to 0 <coughs> Uh, if the x value is equal to 1, then I want to set the red value to be 1. To do that, uh, first of all, I want to make all the value positive for the x value. So, and the minimum value, I know that the minimum value is negative 1. So first thing I would like to do is to do the operation, numerical operations with the x variable. Meaning I'm just going to mul uh, add... Uh, value 1 to the x and as a result all the <coughs> x coordinate value will become positive then the range it will become from 0 to 2 I think after the range became 0 to 2 I want to make it the range I want to make the range between 0 to 1 so what I want to do is to divide this x by 2 so that the range will become 0 to 1 from 0 to 2 
Now finally, I can use this uh, X as a red value for the color. So let's create a color vector named as CD and use the X for the red value and for the other color, let's set it to zero. And finally, I am going to update the attribute called CD for the point, which is the kind of a special attribute you use through Houdini and replace it with the one that I have just created right here. And as a result, you see that the gradational color, the red gradational color has been created and set as a point color based on a X coordinate of the sphere like this. So <clears throat> smaller the X is, it becomes uh, close to black. The bigger the X value is, becomes close to the red color. So that was the basic of vector operations. Now there are also a operations for matrices, but for matrices, it, you, there's a lot to talk about. So I'm going to leave that to a different uh, tutorial video since that's a bit more advanced topic. But to do the ge simple geometrical operations, knowing the numerical strings and vector operations is pretty enough. So let's try to remember what we can do with those three data types and try to continue and try to step up. Now this is it for this tutorial for the variables and operators. For the next topic, I would like to talk about arrays and possibly string as well. So thank you very much. Uh, I hope to see you all in the next video as well. Goodbye.